Finance Committee meeting being held in the Francis Huntley Cooper Council Chambers. Um, Alder Gerhardt Hart is um, present along with myself. Alder Udell is absent with excuse. Next item on the agenda, approval of minutes. I'm going to move to postpone the, sorry, the July, or sorry, the June, nope. The June 13, 2023 finance meeting minutes to uh, the, our July 25th meeting. Any questions? It wasn't included in the packet, so for the public, that's why. Okay. So we'll the next time. Motion is approved. Nope. <laughs> okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion to approve. <laughs> Kind of difficult when you have two people yes. here. You're usually used to three. <laughs> okay, next item on the agenda. Uh, I want to postpone the draft minutes oh. of June 14, 2023, to the July 25th finance meeting. Any questions? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda: public appearances for non-agenda items. I see no one in the chamber. Scott, is anyone on Zoom? No one's on Zoom. Agenda item number four, finance director report. Misty. Thanks. I'll keep it somewhat brief. So CIP, we have our public hearing tonight at the council meeting. Council amendments are due July 5th. Uh, Moody's did issue an uh, annual issuer comment on the city of Fitchburg. They don't give an outlook on what our rating would be or anything, but it just provides the, an update of all of, all of the statistics. Um, so that was released by Moody's uh, about a week ago. And it looks uh, in line with what we've had the past few years. So it all looked pretty good. And then the shared revenue proposal that we've talked about the last couple of meetings was approved and the governor signed it. So still not quite sure how they're going to handle the town of Madison payment, how that's going to get split or if it's going to get split. Uh, if, it, if it does get split between us and the city of Madison, we're expecting about an $800,000 increase for the 2024 budget uh, needs to be spent on public safety or uh, transportation, um, but there's no report back on it. So we really would have a lot of flexibility in how we want to spend that additional money. It's not going to solve all of our funding concerns for the long term, but it definitely makes a big difference. Um, and it's more sustainable and growing. So we're really happy that the legislature uh, and the governor supported local government funding in this last term. Okay. Gabrielle? In regards to that, I was reading through the league's summary of it, and there was a lot of um, things about our TIDs and like restrictions on TIDs if we yeah. accept the money. Is that something that you're going to parse out because just given the fact that we use tits frequently so there's no such thing as free money so there are a lot of strings associated with this money i'll say as well and a lot of things other than just here's additional shared revenue there's a lot of other requirements that we have to follow um, so i haven't delved into it quite so much i was out last week um, but i know the tid levy limit adjustment piece of it that is applicable for all tids created in 2025 and beyond i believe and so what that does is it changes how the levy limit calculation happens for value created within a TID and when you close a TID. So all of our TIDs now and the ones we're creating next month should follow kind of the old rules, which is good. In theory, those I think should be better for us, the old rules, um, but it's something we'll have to watch for any new TIDs that come out. And presumably that'll continue through to the closure of them or does it Correct. just the, okay. Yep. Okay, because yeah, it, looks, it looked like potentially that could have a significant effect on the levy limit adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So only for TIDs created in 2025 or later, at least last I knew. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And there are other things in there too. So I'm not going to say that there's not more details that we still need to work through. Um, I know the Department of Revenue is trying to figure out how some of this stuff is going to work. Um, I'm on the board for my professional association and we're trying to, you know, figure out how we can get some training out for all of the finance directors as well as all of the city administrators and treasurers and all the different groups out there too. So at this point, it's just been passed and a lot of those details still need to get worked out. So we'll keep you posted. Okay. Well, thank, it. thank you, Misty. Item five, review of bills. Item 5A, detailed review of checks for $10,000 and above, June 1st to June 15th, 2023, totaling 
$150,091.67. Any questions? No questions. Moving on to 5B, detailed review of all checks issued. Checks number 125282 to 125355, dated June 1st to June 15th, 2023, totaling $1,288,238.03. Any questions? Go ahead, Gabrielle. I just had one uh, minor one. I don't know if Scott can answer this because he's on the line. But on page 9 of the packet, there's the Who's Woods Raptor Center. It looked like we paid them for some sort of performance of eagles or owls. or I'm just curious what, what program that was because I wish I had known about it because it sounded awesome. Uh, I'm sure it's uh, uh, Anna for the Arbor Day activity. She'll bring in the raptors and all that as part of the Arbor Day. That's what she's done before in the past. And sorry to interrupt. It was actually a library program that brought oh. it in. <laughs> That is awesome. Well, there, there, there you go. Thank you, Misty. I know, I know we've done it before in the past. Yeah, so uh, SRP, how it says in there, SRP performer? Yeah. That's summer reading program. Mm -hmm. Summer performer. reading program. Okay, wow. Okay, so I, for all of us out there, it's still cool. participate in the summer <laughs> reading program. It sounds like an awesome, <laughs> yeah. very awesome. And I think we do have to pay those in advance, so the program might not have actually happened yet. Okay. I'm not sure. Mm, the website, I'm sure, will tell. All right, moving on to item 5C. Detailed review of peak card transactions for $10,000 and above for the cycle ending May 8th, 2023, totaling $152,731.61. Any questions? Hearing none, item 5D, review of peak card transactions for the cycle ending May 8th, 2023, totaling $269,684.37. Any questions? None heard. Going to item six, action items. Item 6A, 2022 audit presentation by Baker Tilly. Um, you want to start us off, Misty? I will. Thank you. Uh, so the city's 2022 audit has been completed. It was issued about a week ago. And then Vasvi is here from Baker Tilly to share with you the audit committee information and share those results. So I'll let her take it away. Thank you, Vasvi. Hey, thank, thank you, Misty. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Vasvi Joshi. I'm a senior manager at Baker Tilly and uh, audit in charge for the city of Fitchburg audit team. And uh, as uh, Misty said, you know, we worked through uh, several months of lots of auditing. Uh, we start off usually uh, the year before, you know, the fall, uh, usually October through December we start looking into processes and controls and uh, high level you know uh, transactions that has happened at the city so that helps us uh, plan for the audit and you know uh, our audit programs and you know tools and templates and that kind of information so this year was particularly challenging with uh, the town of madison merger happening so there were lots of things, you know, we were just going back and forth and uh, working with the city to figure out the entries and the transactions and the treatment, uh, accounting treatment and all that kind of things. Uh, another challenging thing this year was implementation of a new accounting standard, which is GASB 87 uh, for leases. Uh, so we had to evaluate uh, whether that would be applicable for the city or not. And if it was, then we had to record uh, certain transactions and add disclosures and all that. So as a result of all the audit work, uh, you know, we have put together, I'm gonna share my screen now. Uh, okay. Everybody able to see? Yes, we can. Okay, so oh, good. So this is the city's annual comprehensive financial report, which is a huge report and parts of the report are prepared by Misty and some other parts are prepared by us. And, and uh, we have this independent auditors report. It's a three page report, which is basically the result of the summary of everything we say, we audited all these things. What does it mean? Uh, how does the numbers look like? So based on our audit, uh, we have given city a 
unmodified or a clean audit opinion, which is the highest level of assurance any auditors can provide to anyone. Uh, so that's uh, really something to be proud of. And as I had mentioned, the city implemented a new accounting standard this year, which is the lease accounting standard. So that's what this little paragraph sta uh, states that, you know, city has done that. And then next couple of pages are just like some standard paragraph. So that's the audit opinion. Uh, the next several pages uh, are management's discussion and analysis, which is something that MISTI team prepares. And that's a summarized comparative information between the two years, prior year and the current, so when we say prior year is 2021 and the audit year, which is 2022. So there is some, high level highlights and numbers and tables and uh, you know discussions that talks about why things have changed uh, the way they have, the reasons behind them and that sorts of stuff. So if you don't have time to read through the entire uh, financial report, then I do recommend just glancing through, paging through this nice uh, several short page document uh, that Misty prepared. Uh, as part of the audit. So I have also uh, shared another presentation materials. So I'm gonna switch to that now. It's a uh, technology. Okay. So here's the presentation material that I have prepared uh, for you. So lots of times what we see is most governments are interested in balances for their general fund and how is their debt looking and how are their utilities doing. So that's what this presentation uh, is all about. Uh, so here is your general fund fund balance. So the top portion uh, shows the various categories of fund balance, and these categories are defined by accounting standards. Uh, so at the very bottom is the most restrictive category, and as you go up, it becomes uh, less and less restrictive. At the top bar is the total fund balance. So the bluish, greenish looking bar is the 2022 fund balance, and the black is 2021 fund balance. So as you can see, the total general fund fund balance has gone up by almost $2 million. And we will dive into some more details about that. Uh, but if we start from the bottom of the most restrictive category we have, which is the non-spendable fund balance, that has gone up quite a lot. So what does non-spendable mean? It means that that's the fund balance that's tied up in some long-term assets or prepaids uh, you know, or advances or that kind of stuff. So it is just not available. It's not in a spendable form. So the reason it has gone up so much, so much from last year is because general fund is advancing money to the newer, younger TIFs, mainly for TIFs 9 and 10. So they don't have to borrow right away at this point. And, you know, they are using general funds cash uh, for their initial uh, couple of years of operations. So that's the reason, you know, that has gone up that much. The next category, restricted fund balance is very small. Uh, and it has pretty much stayed the same as last year. Uh, there is nothing in the committed category. The assigned fund balance is something that the city decides to put aside for certain purposes. So it could be, you know, for next year's spending as part of the budget, you know, when you say fund balance applied, uh, the use of the fund balance, it could be uh, for some other projects and that kind of stuff. So the details of all that is uh, included in the financial statements. It's on PDF page and I'm not sure, I think I can still, yeah, I can, I can still share that. So, let me 
Okay. So here is all the details. You know, it shows where the fund balance is assigned to. It's for employee retirements, it's next year's budget, shared revenue, uh, budget carryovers, uh, that kind of stuff. So the reason it has gone up this year because the city goes, you know, to set aside almost like 2.2 million for transfers you know, next year. So that's the reason it has gone up. So that's why the unassigned fund balance has gone down slightly, even though the total fund balance has gone up by 2 million. So you can see the middle section, it shows the comparison uh, with the city's final amended budget uh, with the actual numbers. So as you can see, the revenues and other financing sources had a positive variance of almost 1.9 billion. And that was mainly because of uh, licenses and permits, you know, that they were almost a billion dollar higher compared to the budget. And then there were some other categories uh, which also had favorable variances. Again, if you want to see the details of all that, uh, that's available on. It starts here. So if you can see, you know, these are the favorable variances. The taxes are favorable, intergovernmental. Uh, and here is your license and the permits. Uh, up by almost a million dollar compared to budget. Your public charges for services are positive. So almost all categories had positive variances. Uh, and then if you keep going, here are all your expenditures and almost all departments also had positive variances or savings compared to your budget. So all of that has resulted into a swing of almost a three million positive compared to the nine hundred thousand negative that you had planned for. So, and here's the actual two million increase in fund balance. Could I jump in and ask a question? Yep. I, I'm just I'm surprised. So that that's just a year having three million more dollars than we expected. Am I reading that wrong? That sounds like a lot of money that we. I guess, I mean, I don't want to say under budgeted, but like we could have spent money on things like staffing if we had known we had $3 million more million than we anticipated. Am I reading that wrong or is that? Nope, that's correct. So, sorry, Vasvi, is it okay if I jump in? I know. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. So generally this is a chance for the auditors to speak directly to you, so forgive me for jumping in. Um, but the biggest part of that is that million dollars in building permits and zoning permits that was over budget. And we do budget conservatively there intentionally. You know, if we budget as though the market is going to keep booming like it is now, when the market finally does drop down, we have a big budget hole that we have to address. So we do look at trends um, and keep it at a conservative, realistic amount for budget. Um, so that million dollars is the biggest part there. And then we had a lot of vacancies in 2022 between public works and police and fire. Um, all of those vacancies really added up. And then there was also, I don't remember the amount from the fund balance spreadsheet, but there was a fair amount of money that we also carried over from one year into the next. So that would get spent the following year. But if you look at just 12, 31, 22, it's there. One last uh, comment I'll make quick is there is a report on the website that's referenced in the ACFR that goes through the general fund account number by account number. So you could see very specifically where those amounts come from. There's a couple of nuances in there that I'd want to talk to you about, um, how we handle things in the audit different than we handle in the budget. Um, but if you wanted to see more details, that's all out on the website too. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's just surprising to me, I guess. So such a huge percentage of our budget that a lot of vacancies, which means projects don't get done and things don't get done. And so yes. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Misty. Appreciate chiming in. Uh, so then moving on to the next uh, slide, which is uh, the comparison uh, trend information about you know how the city's fund fund balance again, the general funds unassigned fund balance. So unassigned is the free and available fund balance after everything that you have set aside, you know, the non-spendable and committed restricted. So the free and available fund balance 
said, information is what you are seeing here. Uh, so it is the city's policy to have this fund balance within a range of 15 to 25 percent of general fund revenues. So you are seeing this blue line is a 15 percent. That's the lowest range, and then uh, the black line here is the high range, 25. The purple line is 30 percent, which is what the bond agencies like to see to get a triple A. Uh, rating, so that's the 30%. And then the orange line you are seeing is where the city's fund balance has been the last five years. So it's pretty much within the city's fund balance policy uh, all the time or exceeding its fund balance policy at times. And that's what it is at 27.4%, uh, which is exceeding the city's fund balance policy. But as, as you can see, the blue dots are some of the other governments of your size. So that's where they were uh, for the last uh, three years. So the city is not too far from where some of the other governments your size are, even though it's it's slightly higher than you know the city's fund balance policy. It's pretty much uh, in, right there in comparison to where other governments your size were. Uh, the next couple of slides are uh, city's debt position, general obligation debt. So again, this is a credit formation last five years. Uh, it is the city uh, city's policy to have uh, the debt is at a 3% of total equalized value of the city. Wisconsin state statute legal limit is 5%. So cities policy is more stricter, more conservative. So that's what you are seeing. This blue line in the middle is the city policy. Uh, that's where you know you expect or under, you know, you'd expect your debt to be under that amount. The black line at the top is where the statutory debt limit is as per the Wisconsin state statute. And the orange, orange dot uh, below is where the city's actual general obligation debt is. So again, you know, the black and the blue lines are going up and that's expected to happen with the increase in equalized values every year. It's going to go up. And the city's debt has also gone up uh, with all the development that's happening, the TIFs and all that. So this includes the TIF debt and uh, the regular debt everything so that's expected you know that your debt is going up but not as much as the other two lines are so that's a healthy relationship to have so as you can see there is no debt the utilities are debt free which is just great uh and all the debt is within the city's uh municipal side which is the governmental funds uh so you can levy for it so that's, that's where all the debt is. Down here, I have uh, provided a link to a Wisconsin Policy Forum because lots of times governments are interested in knowing where uh, other governments your size are uh, with their debt and other ratios and all that. So uh, you can go on here and if you select debt option, you can customize your comparisons by county so you can look it up and see hey where is madison at where is verona at where is middleton at so uh, you can look them up and see how does your city compare to those other governments the next one is also an information on the debt service so this ratio is showing uh the debt service in comparison to all other uh expenditures not capital expenditures so it's the orange line is the city and the black dots are other normals your size uh and it looks like it's just jumping up and down a little because the city has had some refunding and some tid debt calls in the last few years and uh the numbers here include those amounts 
there will be one year where you are calling the debt, you are using the extra money that is sitting within your TIF districts to pay off all the debt. Uh, then you're also having a refunding. Uh, so those are also, those payments are also included in these numbers. If I exclude those payments and truly just uh, use the regular debt payments that you are making using your levy, then these ratios are more consistent. So they were, uh, the, your debt service was at around 20% in 2018, and it's going down every year, and it's about at 15% in 2022. So that's a healthy looking trend information. Uh, so all the other governments your size are between 20 to 24 or 25% versus your city is between 15 to 20%. So that's a really uh, healthy debt service ratio comparison there. So, and here's how much uh, you, you pay, the city pays. So as you can see in 2021, the principal payment was over 10 million and then 2022, it was 5.5 million. That's because 2021 included a refunding. So that's, that's why it's that much higher. <clears throat> so that's the information that we had about general fund and the city's overall debt. I'm gonna take a pause before I move on to the utility uh, financial results. If there are any other questions we wanna talk about? Not at this time. Okay, thank you. So the city has the utilities, water, sewer, uh, storm, and uh, here's, you know, water uh, at the top is authorized rate of return. Uh, that is authorized by the Public Service Commission, which was 5.25%, and the actual rate of return was at 4.9%. It depends on many factors, but what you should be interested in seeing is that the black line is the operating expenses and the blue line is operating revenues. As long as you are able to recover all your operating costs and expenses, your, your revenues are slightly higher. You know, your utility is in good shape. Your rates are all good. So that's what it is. You know, you are seeing the trend information is looking good there. The second uh, health indicator for any uh, utility is the unrestricted cash reserves. So typically we want to see at least two months, you know, of cash reserves available on hand and water utility had almost 17 months. So like almost a year and a half worth of uh, cash reserves uh, months on hand. So that's a really healthy looking unrestricted reserves. And you know, one of the reasons you're able to do that is because this utility is debt free. So it doesn't have to uh, have any restrictions on how uh, and where it, it uses, you know, uh, or keeps the cash. Otherwise, when you have debt, then you have debt covenants to follow and you have to have certain amount of money restricted for some, uh, that purposes and redemption and reserves and that kind of stuff. So, so similar uh, kind of information for sewer utility, but as you can see, this utility is barely able to keep up, you know, the operating expenses uh, and the revenues are pretty close uh, from year to year. They're almost like trying to just break even barely. So, you know, just making, you just have to make sure that it doesn't fall below. You, you're trying to keep your rates up to date. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to uh, go into a deficit situation. So similar unrestricted reserve uh, criteria here, this utility had about eight months on hand, which is not as great as water utility, but not, terrible either. So continue to watch out, you know, that it doesn't go too too low. So uh, and lastly we have the storm water utility uh, where again
decade, this revenue, operating revenues were like very, very, very uh, down compared to operating expenses were higher. But finally, this year, you know, they have gone up slightly, so trying to catch up. And I think that's because there was a rate increase that happened sometime last year or the year before. Uh, so just trying to catch up with, with that. Uh, and this utility also has about 14 months of unrestricted reserves. So again, a healthy uh, situation uh, as long as that ratio is concerned. And we have a question. Yep. I have a couple of questions in regards to the utilities. So the um, the stormwater, that inflection point we hit where we finally our revenues are more than our operating, is that because oh. we increased that rate so much back in 2021? It was like a, they went, went up like $32 per household or something, right? That Yeah, it went up like 38%, and then that was effective for half a year. So it was a full year in 2022 that was effective, plus the people that were annual customers didn't get that bill until you know six months after that rate changed. So that is a result of that rate increase. That was like a year and a half, almost two years ago now, I think. Okay, so we're in good shape on that regard. The other question I had is, so the water utility looks like it's in really good shape, but I recall that at our last meeting we we – approved a contract for a water rate study. I'm curious, I, I mean, I guess is that just something we do regularly? It looks like we're in very good shape with the water utility. Are we planning to increase the rates even though the, the operating is well below our, our uh, revenue? So when you look at water, setting water, water rates, it's all based on that rate of return, which is at the top of that page. So we are authorized for a 5.25% rate of return, and we only hit 4.9%. Um, so that's why we're eligible. We are falling a little bit behind there, even though our revenues are higher than expenses. Um, but we also have a lot of increased costs that are coming up in the near future. We hired another staff person in 2023. Uh, that needs to get accounted for in there and then some additional projects. So just so, keep ahead of it. Yep, yep. So we have to go through a whole study and then we provide all that information to the PSE and then they decide what our rates are going to be. So it's a very organized regulatory process. Okay. But then in regards to the sewer rates, are we going to take a look at the sewer rates in a, in a way, considering the how like kind of break even we are for the sewer? So that one we are purposely break even because there's much less of a risk there being that MMSD handles most of those costs. Okay. So the bulk of what the sewer utility has as expenses is just payment to MMSD, which we more or less just pass on to the customer. So the Fitchburg costs for sewer are a very small percentage of the total cost to the sewer, if that makes sense. Oh, for sure. But the MMSD, they came in a couple of years ago and they said that they're looking at huge capital infrastructure improvements that could potentially increase. Is that, are we taking that into account or is that just, I know that didn't affect Fitchburg as much last year, mm -hmm. or maybe it was this calendar year, but I assume that may not hold for the next five, six, seven years. Right. So in the, or I think it's in the ordinance, not the resolution. I think it's ordinance for this utility. Uh, we do an annual update based on what the MMSD charges are going to be. So we actually hire Baker Tilly to do an analysis for us based on what MMSD gives us for information. And then we adjust our rates accordingly. Okay, so, so if MMSD goes up, we go up. Great. Similarly. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you, Misty. Uh, we nearly close to uh, being done with the presentation. I just wanted to quickly go over this other one last report that we prepare, which is the reporting and insights. So what really uh, this uh, report is our communication, uh, required communication from auditors to those charged with governance, which is, you know, the city council and, you know, even the finance committee. So this is uh, something uh, I do recommend for you to read through or at least page through. Uh, it talks about auditor's responsibility, so make a daily responsibility, and then it talks about uh, the city's responsibilities. Uh, it talks about the audit approach and results, you know, what did we focus on, were there any complex areas and implementation of new accounting standards, that kind of stuff. Uh, internal control matters. So if we would have noted any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses in the city's internal controls, we would have reported them here. Uh, but if you read through it, this one said that we did not identify any deficiencies uh, that we consider a material weakness. So, which is great for a city or size, 
uh, that there are there are there is really nothing to report. You know, Bisti really has uh, great uh, processes and controls. So there is always segregation of duties everywhere. So one person doing the work and another person reviewing it. And there are always good checks and balances that we as auditors uh, are comfortable with. So that's why there is no internal control matter that we need to report to you. Uh, there are some just other required communications about this new accounting standard that was implemented. Uh, Here are all the non-attest services that we provide, which includes financial statement preparation and uh, some other work that we would have done, as Misty said, like the utility rate consulting, you know, and uh, some other things. Uh, it, it, that's our duty to report to you. Uh, and, uh, and here's your audit team. So Andrea Jensen is the partner, then myself, and Ryan is also another team member. So our email address is at phone numbers and everything is listed. So if you ever have any questions, concerns, anything else you wanna talk about, you can reach out to any one of us and we'll be happy to help you talk to you about anything related to the city's audit. Uh, here are some new accounting standards, you know, that are coming up that would be applicable to the city. And uh, typically we would have reported you any material entries, audit entries that we would have made any, uh, but there were no material entries that we had to record, which means that Misty and her staff, everybody is doing a great job of putting together all the numbers. So if Misty is giving you any reports every month or whenever, uh, you can be rest assured that you can rely on those reports because what she's giving you and what she's giving us, we don't, we didn't find any additional errors or adjustments that we needed to make to her numbers. So her numbers are solid and you can rely on the reports that she's giving to you. So that's a you know great achievement to have for someone. Uh, here is a really small unconnected misstatement. So sometimes what happens is late in the game, we find something or there is like something carried forward from last year uh, and it's it's small enough, it's not material uh, for us to change all the numbers. So that's what we had for water utility. And this, and this is like a carry forward thing from 2021 into 2022. So that's something we didn't have to correct here. Uh, so that's 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 all I had as far as uh, that report. Uh, and those are all the reports that we have as part of the audit. And I'll take any other questions you might have. Any questions in chambers? No other questions. So thank you very much for a well done report. Thank you so much. And I would like to thank Misty again uh, for all her help with the audit and putting together everything, everything that we asked for and answering all of our questions. And uh, very thankful to the city of Fishburg for having us as their auditors. It's always a pleasure to work with all of you and uh, one of my favorite clients. So thank you. Thanks. Moving on to action item 6B. Is there a motion to approve resolution R-11-23, 2023 radio and water meter purchase? I'll move approval. Move approval. Tim, you want to talk about this one? Sure. Uh, each year, the utility budgets for census radios and iPearl meters for new construction and for replacements uh, the cost for new radios and meters was inadvertently left out of the 2023 budget. Uh, they are unused, there are unused funds in the Verona Road project available to use for purchase of these radios and meters. Uh, we're looking for authorization um, for $53,880 of the water utility funds for the purchase of water meters and radios from Corn, Maine. 
and looking to amend the 2023 water utility budget to reallocate the $53,880 from Verona Road capital project to the water meters and radios capital project for purchase of these radios and meters. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 6C, third motion to approve resolution R- oh, Can I interrupt you quick? Yep. Yes, Misty, you want to go with this one? Yeah, so before you take action on this, uh, staff recommends that we slightly change the wording in the resolution. Uh, this was an item that was postponed at the last meeting. Um, it's all been put together now, but the budget information just didn't have some technical words that I needed to have in the resolution in order for that budget amendment to be official. Um, so I did email that language out to the committee in advance. Uh, so we'd like to change that, be it further resolved uh, by the Fitchburg Common Council that it uh, amends the 2023 water utility budget to, tr uh, to transfer and then continue with the dollar amounts, 160,000 of funds, et cetera. So just uh, to amend the 2023 water utility budget is that phrase that needs to be in there. So I'll move approval of R110-23, acceptance of 2023 utility improvements bid at, with amendments as laid out by Misty just now. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> item, action item 6D. Is there a motion to approve resolution R-113-23, approving contract with Pepper Construction for the construction manager services for the police services facility? I'll move approval. Any questions? Hearing so Tim is here to share if you're interested. You want to give us a, just a little slight update on this? Sure. Um, FMG Architects was approved on April 11th, 2023 by resolution R75-23 for the architectural engineering services for the police facility. Uh, request for proposals for the construction management services uh, for the police facility was advertised in the Wisconsin State Journal uh, twice back in April, and documents were placed on uh, Quest CBN. Um, on April 28, 2023, two proposals were received and reviewed, and Pepper Construction was determined to be the most qualified firm based on their response to the RFP. Uh, we're looking for approval on the selection of Pepper Construction for the construction management services of the police facilities. Uh, police services facility in the amount of $587,705. Okay, any questions? Good. I, I do have a question The in terms of, so I guess my understanding is that the, the final design of the building is not complete. So, I, and just in terms of like the order of things, we it's a typical to hire the construction manager services prior to completing the design of the building? Correct. They, they can provide in, insight on the construction uh, part of the project. Um, so value engineer, some items that maybe the, the engineer may not think of. So they work in tandem with the, with the architect designer? Correct. Okay, that's just part of the process. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there a motion, item 68, is there a motion for, to approve resolution R-119-23, terminating tax incremental district number 15, former town of Madison, TID number two? I move approval. Misty? Yes, take please. This one. Uh, so TID 15 is the former TID town, town TID number two on the former town of Madison. This is the last council action that we need to take in order to close this TID. And if you recall, the intention was to do the affordable housing extension that you guys approved at the last meeting. We're going to close this one. And then there's a new TID in that similar area that's coming forward in the next couple of months um, for your consideration. 
So once this is approved, it does need to be by roll call vote tonight at council. Uh, it will then direct us to file information with the Department of Revenue, do a final audit, uh, and then if there's any excess increment that's been collected, that gets distributed to all of the overlying jurisdictions. At this point, I do expect there to be some excess increment, about $150,000 in total. City of Fitchburg would get about a third of that. Okay. Any further questions? Good. Good. Can you just comment, I, I think you've told us before, but can you comment a little bit about what the rationale is for closing this and opening a new one versus just amending the, the current one? So a couple of reasons. So the, the biggest reason is time. So once you open a TID, you have a period of time in which all of the projects that you want to get done need to get done, and that's statute driven. Uh, the project plan also was in some respects different than how the city of Fitchburg does our TIDs. And we wanted to make sure that all of the projects that we considered uh, important as part of that TID were at least included in the project plan as options. So there's additional projects that are included in this new TID as well. Um, and then it kind of extends the opportunity for TID incentives past what would otherwise be statutorily allowed with the old TID. It's kind of like closing the door on the old one and then starting new now with, with the city of Fitchburg. Of course. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Is there a motion to approve resolution R-122-23, amending the 2023 water utility budget, LTE plumber for large meter replacements? I move approval. Tim, you want to talk about this one? Yes, the water utility will be replacing all one and a half inch and two inch meters with uh, Badger ultrasonic meters over the next four years. Uh, per the Public Service Commission, the responsibility and cost of these replacements is with the utility, not the property owner, and must be done by a master plumber. Um, hiring an LTE master plumber is expected to be a lower cost than hiring a plumbing contracting firm to complete the replacements and with more control over the timeline. Uh, we're looking for authorization uh, for the addition of an LTE master plumber for 400 hours in 2023. Questions, Gabriel? Thanks. Do we anticipate that it'll be difficult to hire a position like this or is this pretty common in the plumbing industry? The city's I believe has done this in the past and we were successful um, when we replaced the large meters previously. Uh, so we don't anticipate there, there being an issue finding a part-time master plumber to perform this work. Great, thanks. Okay, any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 6G. Is there a motion to approve resolution R-126-23, approving contract with Lunda Construction for the Salt Shed Rehabilitation Project? I move approval. Tim, you want to talk about this one? Yes, the existing salt shed built in 2007 is experiencing significant rot and section loss to the exposed timbers. Jewel engineering was hired to investigate options for replacement versus rehabilitation of the existing structure. Based on their report, rehabilitation was found to be the best option. Looking for approval to award the salt shed rehabilitation project to Lunda Construction in the amount of $206,084. Okay, any other questions? Go ahead. So I know that I, I, my understanding was that this we had budgeted a lot more because we were anticipating a replacement. So this is, I assume this is well under what we budgeted for the salt shed. Yep, I believe it was 500,000 in total. Uh, this is just the replacement. I think we had some engineering costs too, didn't we, Tim? Um, but it is Correct. still under in total. And then were we able to, were we ever able to recover like like money from, obviously it was poorly done from the outset because that building was meant to last longer than 16 years right or is that or is there anything we can do any warranties or anything or is it just or are we just having to pay out of pocket yeah it's out of pocket kind of what the evaluation determined was that the, the members they used didn't have a specific coating on them therefore it, it 
um, experience the, the rot and section lot loss a lot faster. Um, so that was kind of an oversight on the city back in 2007 when they um, were inspecting the, the project. They, they should have looked a little more closely at the, the um, material that came on site and the contractor used because it, it was material that wasn't specified. So when the London goes and does this, we'll have a lot more oversight to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, therefore, we're, we're hoping to get a lot more than 16 years out of this re rehabilitation. Great. And then do we have any idea what the timeline is for that? Like, it, are we, I mean, I assume we're going to be planning to replace it at some point. Is it a 20-year, 30-year? How long, well, how, how long, will, how long, how long will it last? It, how long we expect it to last? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we would expect it to last 30-plus years. Great. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 6H, is there a motion to approve resolution R-132-23, amending the 2023 recreation budget contractual service? This is a direct referral. I move approval. Scott, you wanna talk about this one? Sure, thank you, uh, Mr. Wheeler. This is uh, uh, a budget amendment to our contractual services within our recreational budget. Uh, the line item 553290 is, is strictly for the, the payment to our recreational program contractors. Uh, we do work on an 80-20 uh, relationship with the contractors for the services and programs that they offer. And, and what that means is they receive 80% of the registration fee and the rec department receives or the city receives uh, 20 percent to manage uh, those rec programs and, and we did budget uh, $45,000 in 2023 uh, and we're currently at uh, $43,000 to 289 so it really is an indication that the rec department program is really is really doing well uh, so what we're asking for is an additional $40,000 uh, within those contractual services uh, to pay our, our contractors through the balance of the year. Um, but again, these, you know, these dollars would be allocated on an 80% of the, you know, 80% of the fees collected. So we wouldn't be losing money on them if you would. Any questions? Good. And I know this is this in the referral, but just to clarify for the public. So this is something we're going to take into account for the 2024 budget. So we don't see this happen again next year. Right. Correct. Correct. We'll make we'll make that adjustment uh, in that 290 account for the rec department for 2024. Yeah, it sounds like good news. The rec department's yeah. doing really well, so exciting. Where where can people find the rec department pr programs, Scott? On, 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 on the web page. <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the plug, Gabriel. <laughs> One other question that I have, Scott. Do you go out and look for contractors to run programs, or can contractors kind of like? Contact well, you. They, that, that's a good. That's a good question, Jim. We're always uh, we're always looking for new programs, and, and really, what uh, what happens is the contractors will contact the recreation department, and they'll say, "Hey, we're interested in offering this program." Uh, so then, what Chad and his uh, staff will do is work with that that contractor, and they'll put together a you know a schedule and and a cost and all of those kinds of things. And then the rec department, they you know take the registration fees, take the dollars you know, work on the, you know, manage the, the list of participants and then basically give the, the list to the contractor and, or the program provider, and then they, they run the program. So yes, uh, you know, if there's people out there that are interested in trying, trying a different program, yeah, reach out to the rec department and, and they can find a site for you, help, you know, help you with the PR, uh, you know, gather all the names of the people that are participating. And then at the end of the day, they, cut you a check for 80% that is brought in. But, you know, just to, to clarify too, if there's expenses associated with the program, uh, those expenses are taken off the top. Uh, and then the balance is where we come up with the 80-20. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. All in favor of resolution 132-23 say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 6I, is there a resolution to approve 
or a motion to approve resolution R-134-23, approving a city letter of support for sustained Dane buildings upgrade, buildings up, grant application through the Department of Energy. This I, is a direct referral. I move approval. Um, Miss, do you want to speak to this, or is Tim somebody going to speak? Uh, I think I can start. Uh, so in order for the city to draft a letter of support on behalf of the city, it really takes council action on behalf of the city. Uh, so that's why this letter is coming forward for your guys' consideration. Uh, what this is, is it's a grant being applied for by Sustained Dane that would benefit properties here in the city of Fitchburg. So we're not applying for the grant. We probably aren't even a beneficiary of it, but we are supportive of this grant application and wanna make sure that's clear because it, we do expect that if it's awarded, it will benefit our properties, or properties within our boundaries. Okay, any further questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item seven, announcements. The next meeting is actually J July 25th, 2023, and not July 27th, as listed in the agenda. Um, item number eight, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned at 6.50. 6 p.m.